Hey all you Google Files out there. In this video segment, we're going to talk about Google Calendar. As we move forward to transition our school and into a Google Apps for Education district, we will be fully implementing the use of Gmail soon, which means that we'll be losing our calendar feature in our old email client. So if you haven't already made the transition to Google Calendar, you'll want to watch a few of my videos that I'm putting out and kind of get used to the change and I think you're going to like some of the things that you see. So in order to log into Google Calendar, all you have to do is go to calendar.google.com and log in using your Google Apps for Education district account. And if you're already logged into your Google Chrome browser, you should be able to just go to calendar.google.com and you'll already be there. So it's pretty simple. And as you can see here, the layout is pretty simple. I wanted to touch base on a couple of things in this video and then show you how to create an event in your calendar. And then as we go into other videos later, we'll talk about some other things like creating secondary calendars, calendar sharing, and how to embed your calendar and use it with Google Classroom. But here, if you look at Google Calendar, at the very top you'll see that you can change your view from a daily view to a weekly view and there's some other settings here as well as an agenda view which basically lists all of your events um, in event order in a list. There is a way to change this so that you can actually customize your view to four day, two day, or three day. All you have to do is go over to your settings and click on settings and once inside Google Calendar you can actually scroll down and on the page where it says custom view right here you can set your custom button to anything from two days to four weeks so you can customize your view the way you want it I'm gonna change mine to three days and then you scroll back to the top click save and now you'll notice that my custom button has changed from four days to three days. Over on the left hand side you have a create button and a thumbnail view of your calendar and then you have a list of my calendars as well as other calendars. Now we'll get into the other calendars later but with every Google account you have your primary calendar which is associated with your login or your name and then you have secondary calendars that you've either subscribed to or that you've created for yourself. Um, if you'd like to create a secondary calendar you can just by clicking on the drop down menu and then clicking create new calendar. I'll cover more of that in the next video. But to create an event if you're ready to start using calendar right off the bat all you have to do is click create and it takes you to the event creation screen and here you just title your event you can set your time and I always tell people to make sure that they change the time zone and make sure that they have it set to the correct time zone so that no matter which device you're viewing your calendar on you'll always know that you're set up on the correct time zone you can set your event to an all-day event if you don't want to set the times up and you can also set up repeat options so that this event it repeats on a daily weekly monthly or yearly basis Yearly is great if you're using your calendar for a lesson plan repository. So if you'd like to post your lesson plans there, and that way, anytime you put a lesson out there on your calendar, it recurs on a yearly basis. Then you set up your location. Start typing any location, and it will automatically autofill with suggested locations based on what you're typing. So I can click on Charles Page High School, for instance, because that's where my event is. You can also set it up so that you can add a video call to your event on your calendar. This allows you to use Google Hangouts if you want to set a calendar time so that you can join in a video call with your guests. And then this is important right here, calendar. Now automatically when you create an event on Google Calendar, it assigns it to your primary calendar associated with your name. But if you want to create an event on a secondary calendar, just click the drop down menu and change it to the calendar where you want it to appear. For this reason, you can create events such as doctor's appointments and personal events for your family on your primary calendar, but you can set up a secondary calendar for your classroom or school or meeting events that you have associated with your classroom. 
You can add a description or add any attachments. This is very handy if you want to add an attachment such as an agenda for a meeting. And attachments can be items from your Google Drive account or anything that you want to upload from your computer. So if you just click Add Attachment, you can go to Google Drive and select an item from your Drive account to add to your event. And it'll add it to the event so that it can be viewed by anybody that's associated with that event, any guests that you've added. You can also set an event color. If you want to highlight that event and make it different from other events associated with your calendar, then you can do that and you can change notifications. So for instance, if you want a pop-up notification on your calendar, it will automatically allow that and you can set a time frame for how long prior to the event you want to be notified. If you want an email notification reminding you of the event, it can be sent to your email address associated with your Google Apps for Education account. You can also set availability on your calendar so that you can show this time is available or busy and you can also choose to have this set as public or private or it will default to whatever your calendar settings are. Over on the right hand side if you want to add guests to your event all you have to do is type in their address and then add that person and they will receive an email notification inviting them to this event so that it can be added to their Google Calendar as well. When you're finished with your event, you just click Save and it adds it to your calendar. Now there are other ways to add events to your calendar. You can simply just click, drag, and let go to choose a time frame and a pop-up will open allowing you to edit your event telling what the event is, which calendar you want to associate it with, and you can even click Edit Event to go in to the screen that we were just on to add extra information including guests to your event. And then the, finally, the third way to add an event is the Quick Add button at the top left of your screen. If you click Quick Add, you can simply type a statement such as Meet John at Starbucks on Friday at 3 and click Add. And as long as there is a person, place, and a time, and a day, it will automatically guess from that statement that you mean the current week and add that item on your calendar. So very simple to use. I think you're going to like it. If you have questions as you go through and get used to Google Calendar, please let me know. And look for a couple of other videos coming up covering some other topics related to Google Calendar. Thanks for joining me.